Hello. We are going to try yet another method of making this translation. Let's define a table of characters with help of repeat directive to repeat this db definition 256 times. And for the value of this byte, we can use this symbol which gets us the number of repetition. It is counting from 1, so to count from 0 we need to add minus 1 here. And let's take a look. This is the table that we defined. 256 characters with consecutive values from 0 to FF. And you can see that the address of each byte is the address of the table plus the number of this byte. Now we can change some values in this table and then when we look up the value corresponding to the byte that we want to convert, we can take the converted translated value of this byte from here. So let's make it a translation table with the same rule that we used here. But here we are going to use the if directive of the assembler to affect how the data is defined. So if this value is in range of the capital letters, then we are going to subtract capital A and add small a. Otherwise, we are going to leave it unchanged. And so now we have a table that has some of the values altered. For example, if we look up the value for the byte 41, then at this address 41 we have value 61, which is translated character. And now we need to modify this code. Let's take the address of the table into ECX register. And we are going to read translated character from this address. But we also need to add the value of this byte into this address. We are not allowed to do it this way because to add values we need uh, two registers of the same size and this is 8-bit registered and this is 32-bit register. The error is that the sizes do not match. And so we need to have this value in a 32-bit register. Well, we can simply zero the entire register and then when we modify just the lowest part of this register, then the upper part is going to stay at zero. So this should work. Let's remove this testing code and try if the translation works. Yes, it does. We no longer need this labor. There is, however, another way of doing this. We can use mopzx instruction to set up the 32-bit register while the source is only a byte. There are, in fact, two separate instructions mobzx 
X and MOV SX for unsigned and signed values. This one uses zero extension and this one uses signed extension. So this one fills the upper portion of the target register with copies of the sign bit of the source value, while this one simply zeroes the upper portion of the register. And the translation works. We can also simplify this code because x86 allows to use sums of registers for addressing. So we can use, use these uh, two registers directly to form the address. And we could even use the table address directly here. But if we keep the register, we can initialize it outside the loop. Uh, then this code is going to work even if we change this address to use a different table. Now we have a nice code for this translation. But let's consider a table that has larger elements, for example, double words instead of bytes. We could even store addresses in such table. And because every element is 4 bytes long, to compute an address of such element, we need to multiply the index by 4. And we are in fact allowed to do it. This is a correct code. And this is because x86 has something called scale index base addressing. This is base register, this is index register, and this is scale, which multiplies the index. And the allowed values for the scale are 1, 2, 4, or 8. So this is one of them. And we can also omit the base register if we do not need it. We can use the address of the table directly. For now, let's go back to bytes. And let's take a look at another instruction. You may sometimes encounter this instruction, xlet translate. This is a legacy instruction, just like the loop instruction that uh, we have been using er earlier. And this instruction does something similar, but it always translates just a single byte. So we do not need to zero extend this into EAX. It just translates a byte in AL register uh, with help of table at this address. And just like uh, the loop instruction did not allow to use any other register, always had to use ECX, uh, this instruction always needs to use this register for addressing. So to use it we also need to preserve the EBX register because of the calling convention.
This instruction also has a shortened form because this argument is always the same anyway. And you can see such legacy instruction sometimes used because it has a short code. We can see it in debugger that this instruction is in fact just a single byte. But other than that, this is just much less flexible than just using scale index base addressing. So we are going to leave it like this. Thank you for watching.